Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Lost Galleon A beachcomber was exploring sea caves on Oregon's north coast recently when they discovered timbers from the hull of a Spanish galleon that sank over 300 years ago. It's called the Santo Cristo de Burgos, and explorers have been looking for it for a very long time. The ship vanished during a voyage in 1693 on its way from the Philippines to Mexico. It drifted off course and then was wrecked somewhere near the village of Manzanita. For decades now, pieces of the galleon have been washing up on beaches in Oregon. People have been finding chunks of beeswax that were on board the vessel. Beeswax was a hot commodity shipped from Asia to the Spanish colonies and used to make candles for Catholic ceremonies. The explorer who recently found the wreckage was a commercial fisherman named Craig Andes. He found one very large piece of timber and dozens of others that had been pushed into the same sea cave. But he couldn't be sure which vessel they belonged to. Archaeologists had to go in and radiocarbon date the wood. They confirmed the timbers to be from a Spanish ship that sank in the 17th century. Although the name of the ship is likely never going to be found emblazoned on a piece of wood, there really weren't many Spanish galleons lost between 1660 and 1700 on the Pacific coast of North America. The Caribbean's a whole other story. The chances are very good that these old pieces of wood belong to the famous ship the Cristo de Burgos. Number 9. Drinking and Driving in Ancient Egypt New research has shown that King Tutankhamun, the legendary boy king of ancient Egypt, may have died in a drinking and driving accident. He may have been drinking too much wine and driving his chariot too fast when he crashed. That accident could have been the cause of his death. Biomedical Egyptologist Sophia Aziz told BBC Science Focus that King Tut was likely a typical teenager. He drove his chariot and he got drunk on wine. One of the biggest mysteries with King Tut has always been the wound on his leg. Early autopsy reports show that his leg was fractured prior to his death. More recent reports have shown that the wound was infected. Sophia Aziz suggests that the 19-year-old's leg may have hit the dashboard of his chariot at high speed. This caused the fracture, and then the wound got infected. From that, he got sick and died. Sophia also says that if she is correct, Tutankhamun was not the sickly little boy that history has labeled him. He may have been a battle-hardened warrior, not a frail wimp. Inside King Tut's tomb, archaeologists found 130 fragmented sticks. Researchers initially thought they were walking sticks and that he had difficulty with his mobility. But others have suggested they were throwing sticks used to hunt. He was also found buried with dry white wine and six chariots. Tutankhamun was clearly a big fan of drinking, and he loved to drive chariots. Could this mixture of too much wine and high speeds have killed the king? Number 8. The Early Flame Researchers from the University of Toronto and scientists from the Hebrew University have identified something that could change how scientists understand ancient humans and their relationship with fire. At a site in western Israel, they found evidence of humans manipulating flames 800,000 years ago. The discovery was recently published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Researchers say what they found is the sixth location in the world of fire being used by humans more than half a million years before today. How did they make this amazing discovery? They used artificial intelligence. The researchers first started to analyze artifacts taken from the Evron Quarry in Western Galilee. They dug over 45 feet deep to uncover old animal bones and Paleolithic tools. It's one of the oldest sites in Israel. At first, they didn't see any evidence of heat or ash, which isn't surprising given how old the site is. But then the team developed an advanced computational model powered by AI to look at the makeup of materials at a molecular level. The model is able to estimate the temperature at which the stone tools were heated, even though it happened almost a million years ago. The AI model revealed that the flint tools found on site were at one point heated to a temperature of over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists still don't know which group was heating their tools to such an extreme temperature. They think it may have been Homo habilis, as they transitioned into Homo erectus. 
It certainly wasn't Homo sapiens, since they had yet to evolve. The discovery really is fantastic, because it proves that our most primitive ancestors knew how to wield fire long before us. And now for number seven, but first, it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Lisa Turner and Steve Rawson for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about discoveries that could change history. Number seven, destroying history. History has been changed in Northern France. You hear all the time about how one ancient culture destroyed the buildings of an older culture to make way for new buildings. But it's not something that happens as much as it used to except in France, where dozens of ancient standing stones erected 7,000 years ago were removed to make way for a superstore. At the edge of Karnak, also known as the French Stonehenge, the stone columns were ripped out of the ground. This place is famous for its two main sites, Menek and Kermario. Between the two of them, there are over 3,000 monuments spanning an area of four miles. The purpose of these standing stones has been a mystery for centuries. It was built over a thousand years before Stonehenge in Britain. Some historians think it may have had religious significance. Other experts believe it could have been a farming calendar. There's even a legend that says the monoliths are the remains of a Roman legion that was cursed and turned into stone. This is one of the most important ancient places in Europe. The caretakers applied for the site to be admitted onto the UNESCO World Heritage List but it wasn't accepted. What was accepted was a building permit at the local mayor's office in 2022. The French hardware chain Mr. Bricolage was given permission to destroy 7,000 years of history. These stones survived the wrath of Julius Caesar. They miraculously lived through World War I and World War II. But their history is one step closer to being eradicated now because of a big name hardware store. What do you think? Should that be allowed? Let me know in the comments. Number 6. The Germanic Tribes of Ancient Poland At an undisclosed archaeological dig site somewhere in East Poland, researchers have found a gruesome stash of ancient treasures in a cemetery. They found cremation urns from 2,000 years ago, along with 12 burial pits. They think the cemetery was used by a local Germanic tribe. They discovered the bodies of warriors and women. What's really interesting is that according to archaeologist Dr. Socha, the graves show that the Germanic tribes of ancient Poland had an assortment of unusual burial practices. Not all the burials were the same. In most tribes and groups throughout history, burial customs were uniform. There was one agreed-upon way that the dead should be buried or burned, or for the Zoroastrians left to be eaten by vultures. But here, researchers found some dead who were burned and placed in ceramic urns. Others were buried unceremoniously in the dirt. Some were thrown into the bottom of deep pits. Some of the pits were filled to the brim with skeletons. Why were there so many different types of burials in this part of Europe? It has a lot to do with another discovery. Researchers found metallic trinkets buried amongst the dead. These trinkets were used as safety pins to hold garments together. They likely came from the Roman Empire and were imported. The graveyard is proof that even in the 1st century BC, the barbarian tribes of Northern Europe were extremely diverse. There were a lot of different people living here with different customs. They also clearly had access to Roman trinkets, despite living in a distant land. Number 5. Roman Bulldogs the history of humans and hounds goes back many thousands of years to when scientists are not exactly sure. But new research has proven that breeding small dogs was taking place 2,000 years ago in the Roman Empire. At a Roman site in Turkey, archaeologists found the skull of a pooch that would have looked an awful lot like a French bulldog. The skull was discovered in the ruins of ancient Trales. Professor Vedat Onar from Istanbul University took an interest and launched an investigation. The team of researchers took measurements to compare with bone material from modern dogs. They conducted craniometry, comparing the teeth, palate, and skull. The results showed that the skull was the same as a modern, short-nosed dog, an extremely small one. This changes the way scientists look at the development of dogs, but it also changes how historians look at the Romans. This is an amazing discovery because it shows that the Romans were specifically breeding small companion dogs. This would have been an animal that couldn't do anything useful except accompany its guardian. It wasn't a work dog or an attack dog. It simply hung out and looked cute. 
which was apparently something the Romans were very fond of. Because the dog was found in a grave, it's obvious that somebody loved the creature enough to spend money to give it its own burial plot. Number 4. Cave Cannibalism There is a cave system in Barcelona, Spain that holds the secrets of early humanity. It's called the Coves del Tol de Moya system, and it formed through a process of dissolving limestone. The system is around one mile long, so not very big. Old studies have found the remains of all kinds of prehistoric creatures inside – cave bears, terrifying hyenas, and extinct aurochs. But during the Middle Paleolithic, Neanderthals lived inside the cave system. Previous discoveries found the skeletons of three Neanderthal children. But it's a recent study that has flipped history on its head. Researchers from the Catalan Institute of Human Paleoecology and Social Evolution found fragments from a Neanderthal skull. The fragments of skull came from a juvenile. On the bone fragments are cut marks. They say the cut marks indicate that the skull was processed by other Neanderthals. To try and make this as not disgusting as possible, I'll try to put it simply. The Neanderthals may have eaten their friends' brains. The skull fragments have been dated to around 52,000 years old. It's also not the first time Neanderthals have been caught eating one another. Other sites in Europe have yielded discoveries that suggest similar practices. This is just the first time it's been found in Catalonia. Scientists are beginning to think that Neanderthals may have really been vicious cannibals. Number 3. Montezuma's Lost Treasure for 500 years, the lost treasure of Montezuma has captured the imagination of explorers and adventurers. Rumor has it the treasure is worth roughly $1 billion in modern currency. But is the treasure even real? Is anyone close to finding it? In the year 1519, Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés landed in Mexico. It was the beginning of the end for the Aztec Empire. Cortés made alliances with enemies of the Aztec such as the Tlaxcalteca tribe. Before long, Cortés found his way to the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. There, he killed King Montezuma, and later that same year, he destroyed the city. Montezuma had been in power since 1502. He had an estimated 6 million people under his domain, spread throughout the major city-states and the countryside. Montezuma had been a philanthropic leader, he established a zoo, built a library, and commissioned other great works. While historians know all this stuff, and about his death at the hands of the Spanish, the exact details are murky. Much of what is known also comes from Cortés's journal. He wrote that Montezuma thought the Spanish were gods, and that they were fulfilling a prophecy. Montezuma folded his empire without much of a struggle because of his beliefs. Some historians don't even think it was the Spanish who killed the king but his own people for allowing the Spaniards into their lands. On the night Montezuma was killed, the citizens of Tenochtitlan rose up against the Spanish. The conquistadors fled, and as they ran, they were forced to ditch the treasure they had stolen from the city into Lake Texcoco. When Cortés successfully pillaged the city later that year, the lost treasure was never found. Some believe the Aztecs dredged it out of Lake Texcoco and then stashed it in a secret location. Construction workers found a single piece of gold in 1981 in Mexico City. Tests proved in 2019 that the gold came from the time of Montezuma. It may have been a piece of the lost treasure, but it's the only one that's ever been found. Number 2. Beethoven's Bizarre Death The first ever DNA analysis of Ludwig van Beethoven has revealed a shocking truth about his mysterious death. Up until now, nobody had known exactly how he died. Born in 1770, Beethoven became an extremely skilled composer. But in his late 20s, he started to lose his hearing. He was completely deaf by his 40s. As he continued to age, he suffered from more and more problems. When he died in 1827, it was assumed Beethoven had lead poisoning. That has been the number one theory for his cause of death for almost 200 years. But now, the DNA analysis has shown that in fact, Beethoven had hepatitis B. Study author Johann Krauss from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology said he and his team could not say for certain what killed Beethoven. All they could say was that he definitely was infected with the hepatitis B virus. They found out by analyzing preserved locks of his hair. Number 1. 
Women Hunters In prehistoric days, men hunted and women gathered. That has been the accepted view of gender roles thousands of years ago. But now, an international team of scientists has changed history forever. They recently looked at an amazing 63 hunter-gatherer societies from the ancient world. They analyzed and cross-referenced evidence from groups in North America, Africa, Asia, and Australia. They also looked through academic papers published over the past century. It was a huge job, but one with amazing results. The team found that in 79% of prehistoric foraging communities, there were women hunters. Evidence also showed that women continued hunting after giving birth. They didn't sit around the house taking care of the children. They went back out to fight mammoths and other prehistoric beasts. 50% of female hunters went after big game, mostly deer and moose. Study co-author Kara Wall Scheffler from Seattle Pacific University said the notion that prehistoric women gathered and men hunted has been totally dismantled. This is a discovery that very much does change our view of history. It proves that men and women were often a team in the prehistoric world. They went toe to toe with Ice Age monsters together. Thanks for watching. Which discovery was your favorite? Which one surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!